Hey guys, this is Lance from Learn to Play. I'm here at uh, Depticon 2016 again. I'm here with Mike Chanel, the lead designer of Rub and Bones 2. Had a chance to take a look at the new game, and he's going to give us a little bit of details about what we're looking at for the new Kickstarter. So this Kickstarter is launching in a few weeks in mid-April here, and this is the second season of Rum and Bones. So we have uh, done some overhaul to the system, we have some new crews, and some really new uh, enhancements to the game that we're really excited about. Awesome. And so um, with the launch of this, what can we kind of expect with uh, the second edition as far as uh, the base set? And uh, you were talking to me earlier about where you're going to have an upgrade pack for Season 1 to bring it in line with all the new changes for this one. Can you tell me a little bit about the uh, upgrade pack in that? Absolutely. So by the time this video gets out, it's probably been out there that there are some pretty massive changes between the first Rum Bones and the second one. And one thing about that is that we wanted to make sure that everyone had the chance to you know, upgrade everything to be compatible with the Season 2 stuff. So we have uh, an upgrade pack that's going to include every single component you need for the first set to bring it up in line with the uh, Rum Bones Season 2. That's going to be upgrades for all heroes, all existing factions, uh, every single thing that has been released all in one convenient package for you guys. Excellent. So, guys, we're going to go ahead and take a cut here. We're going to zoom in and take a closer look at some of the changes that you guys are going to see for Rum and Bones 2. All right, guys, so here's a look at some of the new materials that we have for the game. Noting that this is all just prototype stuff, all printed at home, so definitely not the final quality material you guys are going to get in the core game. Uh, first thing to look at is we have a new uh, score tracking tile for everyone. This is going to track the victory points for both sides and the Kraken pool for both sides. No uh, longer will you have to set those cards aside, count them up. You're going to have a convenient tracker right here, as well as a uh, tracker that's going to keep track of first player here. Uh, that's important because we one of the major changes we've done to the game is uh, before you would activate your entire crew and your entire team and then your opponent would do the same. We've actually moved now to an alternating activation method where I'm going to activate one hero, you're going to activate one hero, it's going to go back and forth until everything is done. This kind of gives more of a dynamic feel to the game as players are reacting to each other and heroes are actually dynamically changing what's happening across the battlefield, you know, and reacting to things that are happening and that your opponent, you know, is making moves, uh, killing crew members and so forth. The second thing we have here is that we've upgraded all the objective tiles in the game. Uh, we've made them easier to read, easier to understand. All the information is on one side, so no longer we have to flip them over to see what the effect is. And we've revamped it so that all the objectives have 6 HP, a little easier to take down to increase uh, the speed of the gameplay. And the rewards have changed as well. Objectives have various victory points they give, various coins that's actually going to go to all the crew when they're destroyed, and each of them has a a uh, new effect that's going to be a one-time trigger. Uh, no longer is it going to be a lingering effect that you're going to have to remember and you know, potentially forget. So for example, you destroy the wheel, you immediately draw three Tide cards. Whereas in the old version, you would get plus one to your Tide card limit. So now it's a one-time buff that's going to happen. No longer you're going to have any of those bookkeeping aspects and have to be forced to keep track of all these things you've gotten. In addition to that, we have given you a crew card. This is going to give you all the information for the deck hands, the bosuns, and the deck gun, which actually can be upgraded, as you saw in the previous objectives there, as the game goes on, with all the information being compiled into one place. In addition to all that, we've upgraded all of our uh, cards to now have beautiful full art. Um, these, the tide cards function mechanically the same as they did before. Playing the uh, tide cards of Kraken symbols still ris runs the risk of summoning the Kraken. Uh, they still function exactly as they did before, but just now we've gone and given them a nice uh, art overhaul. And again, we'll be doing that with the upgrade kit for the previous edition as well, so you've got some lovely new pieces to look for in that. And perhaps the single biggest change to the game, we've moved to a new style of character cards with an upgrade system. So this is Viana, the avarice seeker, the captain for the Maria de la Muerte, the Spanish crew that is in the second core box. Uh, her beautiful sculpt right here, this is again a resin prototype. But every hero, they will start with none of their abilities unlocked except for a basic attack. Coins before were used to actually use the attacks and abilities. Now they're used to purchase them and upgrade them in our new leveling system. So Viana here, like every other hero, will have two abilities. She, hers is the high cost of living, which costs zero, uh, sorry, three for her to buy. And then she has Tariff. Reaction abilities have changed in a way that they are powerful one-time use effects. So you're going to start with them, three to buy them, it's going to gain this ability, but once you use it, it's going to flip back down to level one. You have to rebuy it. Unlike that, though, she's going to have her high cost of living ability. This costs three to buy. She's going to get this, and it's going to be a permanent effect that she can use every single turn. 
In addition to that, she can buy it for three. She can upgrade it to a more powerful version of itself. Same thing with her basic attack. Starts at level one for four coins. She can upgrade this to a more powerful version of it. Every hero in the game has three unique abilities that function like this. And of course, that upgrade pack like we we're talking about will come with the upgraded hero dashboard and cards for every single hero from the previous campaign. Now you were also saying that with, uh, as the player count increases, the number of players that are playing the game, it'll change the amount of uh, characters that will be out there? Yeah, so we have revamped our multiplayer rules as well to make things a little bit more streamlined. Uh, if you're playing with your standard uh, two uh, 1v1, you're going to each be controlling three heroes. We've cut that down from five uh, as a change because now each hero is a little bit more dynamic with their upgrades. You can choose how they level up, what abilities unlock. So we didn't really see a need for you to be controlling five heroes at a time. So cut that down to three. But one of the changes is now you can customize your crew entirely on any classes you want. So before, you had to pick one of each of the classes to take. Now, if you want to run three gunners or three swashbucklers, two captains, you can do all that. The customization is fully up to you. So in regards to multiplayer, we've streamlined that experience. When you're playing with four people, two on two, you're each going to be controlling two heroes, so for four active heroes out any time. And for uh, six players, three on three, you're going to be controlling uh, the full complement of five heroes plus your crew out any time, making games go by very quickly. So just by adding more players, there's going to be more guys on board, more things are going to be de uh, getting destroyed faster. The game is going to go by much uh, quicker and much uh, faster pace. And that was important to us because when you have six players uh, sitting around the same game, we don't want those games to drag on. We want those to be really quick, dynamic experiences so you can finish one game and immediately go like, man, that was cool. We want to play another one. So just keep jumping in and keep having fun. Great, thanks so much, Mike. I appreciate you giving me the rundown, and I uh, can't wait to see how this turns out on Kickstarter. All right, so we just got done playing through season two of Rum and Bones, and I have a couple guys here that played just an amazing game, and we're gonna get a couple of opinions on them, see what they have to say about it, and what they think of the new game. So if you guys go ahead and give me a, your thoughts on the game, what you liked about it, what you might not have liked about it. Uh, this is your first experience playing any type of Rum and Bones, so. Jesse. First off, let's say, what did you think of it? Jesse. I thought it was fantastic. It's the best board game, uh, new, best new board game that I've played in, in a solid year. I haven't played the previous edition, so I have nothing to compare it to there, but this was a blast. Okay. What did you think? It was definitely a lot of fun. It was, you know, moved fast, and, you know, the, the, the rules were pretty easy to, to understand. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Did you feel like the action and the pace of the game was went pretty well overall? Yes. Did you like the fact that the heroes are interacting one versus the other now, where you guys each activate separately? Oh, okay. Yeah. I, well, we didn't play the previous version, so yeah, I, okay. I can't compare that. <laughs> yeah. But what I can say is I like the uh, the way the lethality works. It's not it's not trivial where it, it's it's just easy to kill someone, but it's also not game ending if someone dies. And I I, I think that the balance of the respawn really works well with the game. Great. Well, they're not really dying. You know, they're, they're well. just taken out of action. But <laughs> yeah, it was it was definitely an interesting feature. Where you know you because know, so you can push them forward, you can risk them. Yeah. And if they die, oh, they'll, you know they'll be back eventually. So. Yeah. You can protect them, but you don't want it. But you don't want to overprotect them like in some other games where if you lose a captain, you're toast. You know, in yeah. some other uh, you know style of the style of game. Great. You so, can. in your guys' opinion, is this a game that you're going to be looking for in the future? Oh yeah, Absolutely. definitely. Awesome. Thank you so much. My Appreciate pleasure. it, guys. Welcome.